Braves baseball is winning baseball. When we come out here, we expect to win now. It is a whole new season. Welcome, everyone. I'm Jeff Hullinger, the home opener for the Braves upon us and the team getting ready to take on the Padres for their first home series of the season. A lot of people in attendance at Truist Park this weekend. Nobody in the United States, as far as the turnstiles go, love baseball like this Braves fandom. It is amazing how many people pack into Truist on a on a series basis. Now, the Braves are coming off two very large years. In 2022, they clinched the National League East division title for a fifth straight year. And then, of course, winning the World Series in 2021 for the first time in 26 years. The Braves kicked off the 2023 season in D.C., taking on the Nats last weekend, and they won that series taken two games, scoring seven runs in each of the first two games. The Nationals went on to take the rubber game, the third one, winning by a count of four to one. The Braves starting off with several injured pitchers, including Kyle Wright and Rysel Iglesias. Wright was slow to start spring training after he received shoulder treatment in January, and then Iglesias, as you know, dealing with that shoulder inflammation, he's got to rest his arm right now. But the Braves not worried. They've got a lot of pack. Yeah, I mean, some slight things. This is going to happen in the normal course of um, getting yourself ready. And, you know, the good news is we have a lot of depth. Braves fans excited, obviously, about Brian Snitker signing a contract extension. This will go through 2025. Rick Garney, our man, shares reaction to all of that. All right, Rick Garney here in the world headquarters of 11 Alive. Snit will be sticking around a while. The Braves signed their manager, Brian Snitker, to a contract extension through the 2025 season. Well, you can't ask for more. Five straight division titles, and of course, you may remember the 2021 World Series trophy. Snitker has led the Braves for six seasons, but he's been with the organization for 46 seasons. He also has more than 500 career wins as a manager. All right, Mr. Garney, thank you. The team unveiled some great new uniforms for this season. Everybody on board with them. How do you not love these? They are the City Connect jerseys to honor Hank Aaron, and they are inspired by the uniform that Hank Aaron wore in 1974 when he hit home run 715 to break Babe Ruth's record inside Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium. Great details, 715 inside. Uh, Aaron always used that phrase, keep swinging, when he was giving advice. And number 44 in gold script by the tag. And those are just some of the features honoring the great man. The Braves will debut those jerseys on Saturday, April 8th, a date very important in the life of times of Hank Aaron and Major League Baseball and this country. And we'll wear them every Saturday home game during the season. Well, the field at Truist Park looks better than ever. There was a time at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium 30 years ago when it looked like a park. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> it was bumpy and a mess, but it was completely this. This stadium was completely redone during the offseason with hybrid overseed and grass all grown in South Georgia. It's about 100,000 square feet of new grass. Braves also found their new television voice. Brendan Godden is the new play by play announcer for this season. He grew up a big Braves fan in the Midwest. He previously was the voice of Georgia Tech sports and also on the Big Ten Network, also did Madden football. Gordon wrote on social media that it was the realization of a childhood dream and also knew this season Major League Baseball changing some of its rules. Let's talk about them. Up first, the bases, the size of the bases increasing from 15 to 18 inches. It is an effort to reduce injuries with less collisions. The size of home plate will stay the same. Next, the pitch clock, and this is revolutionary with the hopes to speed up the game. Pitchers have 15 seconds to throw and the bases are empty. If someone is on base, that increases to 20 seconds. Batters need to speed it up too. They will be in the batter's box, have to be there by the time that there is eight seconds left on the clock. And finally, the shift. You either love it or you hate it, and left-handed batters definitely love this change. From now on, two infielders must be on each side of second base before the pitch is thrown. Earlier this year, we spoke to Brian Snitker about these changes. Yeah, I mean, it's um, we're starting right off. I know the games are going to, you know, the rules are everything is, is going to be. So we have, a, you know, a month to, to do all that because, you know, there's going to be some adjustment. There's going to be questions with the shift thing. 
you know, Walt and I were talking about that too. It's, you know, we had a question that you're going to be able to review if teams try and cheat on the chip, shift and, and, you know, late and things like that. You know, I think the pitch clock's going to be, while I'm, you know, I kind of, I'm for it, but it's going to be a big adjustment for some of these guys. Yeah, I like it a lot too. I think a lot of fans do. A major honor for the Braves at the end of last season. As we begin new, let's talk about the old. Every year, the Atlanta Sports Council recognizes the best in sports with the Atlanta Sports Awards. The nomination period for the most recent show spanned the fall of 2021 and all of 2022. Maria Martin has a closer look at the top sports team from that period. Of course, it's the Braves. When you think of 2021 in Atlanta sports, the Atlanta Braves are sure to cross your mind. The Braves won their fourth consecutive division title, then moved on to claim the National League pennant, and of course they didn't stop there, taking home their first World Series title since 1995. One year later, they erased a really big deficit in the NL East and returned to the postseason. The Atlanta Braves are this year's outstanding team. It's obviously really difficult to go back to back. It's why a team hasn't done it for so long. How difficult was that, especially given the fact that there's so much pressure, everyone's saying they want the Braves to win again. And it's hard, because you, you know what you went through, the previous year to, to win the championship and how hard it is and how many good, how things have to go right, you know, with injuries, um, things like that, just guys getting hot at the right time, um, your team getting hot at the right time, and, and it is, it's it's very, very hard. That's one of the reasons why I think there had, there, you don't see it very often because it is, it's such a hard thing to do, number one, and number two, things have to go so well for you to, to pull it off. You know, it's what we all, do this for since you know when we're kids you know it's bottom of the ninth in the world series and three and two bases loaded that that whole thing i mean and it was kind of right there in that moment for me how often do you think about the world series win um, a lot I, i'd be lying if i didn't say i didn't think about it a lot world series champion how does it sound that sounds great that sounds great i mean i'm you know, I'm honestly still still shocked a little bit. It's, it hasn't set in yet, I don't think. It's you know, the pinnacle of what we try and do in our sport, and it's something that I hope never goes away. And that's why I told the players. It's like, you guys are world champions for the rest of your life. Don't ever forget this. And um, and they shouldn't, because it, like you say, there's it's, a, it's an elite group of people that have those rings and, and can say they're world champions. And, and that accolade will be underneath your signature for the rest of your life. So it's, it's something that you should never forget. And that's something you should never not grab onto and, and relish for the rest of your life. I'm really proud of it, obviously. I'm gonna be proud of it forever. There's times I'm still like, wow, I can't believe we won the World Series. Like, we, I, we, have we have, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have all kinds of things at home. And we went to the stadium with my family to take photos with the trophy because we, we weren't there. And um, I'm just, you know, I, I, you know, from my standpoint, career-wise, like, I'll always have that now, no matter what happens, right? You still sure. have success and so on, and the city will always have that as well. I'm just incredibly, incredibly proud of that, and you know, no matter what, you know, hopefully I'm here for 20 years, but I'm always going to be tied to this place, and I'm always going to be tied to Atlanta, and I'm proud of that. All right, Maria, thank you. So you bought a ticket to an upcoming Braves game. It, it is now time to think about the parking. Now, here's what you need to know. You need to make sure that you're analytical about this. Officials recommend buying a parking pass before heading to Truist. Braves controlled parking lots have different opening times, so you want to check those beforehand. And, and something to keep in mind, a tailgating is only allowed in parking lot N29. If you plan to use ride share like Uber or Lyft, there are two designated drop off and pickup areas. You can see them on this map. One is on Wendy Ridge Parkway and the other is on Heritage Court. That's just off Cobb Parkway. New this season, Truist is introducing a self checkout experience for concessions. There will be about 40 of them in five separate locations. Meanwhile, there are also some new menu items. Take a look at these. First of, up, uh, first of all, it's called the Cleanup Burger. It includes four grilled beef patties topped with golden hash browns, potatoes, bacon, cheese, and a fried egg. Also an angioplasty from Emory Hospital. It's served on a Belgian waffle with maple syrup. Man, oh man. <laughs> Next, the submarine sandwich. Carved to order in front of fans, turkey breast, red dragon cheddar sauce, bacon, fried green tomato lettuce, and avocado crema. The best part, it can be built as a three foot long sub for up to eight people. And third, the Georgia BLT, bologna, lettuce, tomato, pimento cheese, and garlic mayo on a brioche bun. 
And then we have the triple play. It's a play on the Caribbean staple featuring a, a creamy potato filled with chicken. It looks like, looks like a baseball, doesn't it? And fifth, the, the Dewey Dog, which features an Dewey sausage topped with beef, chili, onion, and cheddar cheese, and maybe even a 20% off of antacids on that one. And last but not least, the closer, a beef hot dog wrapped in mozzarella whipped potatoes then fried golden brown and served with spicy mayo. Man, oh man, <laughs> that's a lot of calories and a lot of carbs. All four games this weekend are in the evening. They begin at 7.20 p.m. on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and then at 7.08 on Sunday. 11 Alive, of course, we'll have full coverage of the season on all platforms, including here on 11 Alive Plus. You can also find more information about the season on our website. That's 11alive.com.